By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Hank and he's a well-known combo control player. And he's playing with a Field of Dreams deck. And I am playing with a Mono Blue Timmy deck. So we've seen that before on the channel. Actually, we've seen both of these decks on the channel before. Uh, the Field of Dreams was played by another player though. And if you'd like to see that game, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now on the screen. So before we start with the actual matches, I'm going to give you some quick information about both decks. If you'd like to go to the matches immediately, you can check out the description below to find a timestamp and that will take you to, um, to the games. My opponent today is playing with a Field of Dreams deck. Now I do not have uh, a picture of the deck itself, but I can give you a brief description about how this deck works so you know what to expect. So he's playing with uh, the card Field of Dreams, a card which makes both players play with the top card of the library revealed. Now once you have this card in play and there's only one blue mana to cast, the fun begins. Because when you combine this with Millstone, you can see exactly what cards your opponent, in this case, what cards I have on top of my um, library, and you can kind of create a soft lock, meaning you can mill the cards on the top of my library if you think, hmm, they're threatening cards. And what you could do, for instance, is make sure that I only draw lands or I only draw cards that are useless against the um, Field of Dreams deck. For instance, the Field of Dreams deck usually plays without any creatures. So if I draw, like, I don't know, a Swords to Plow series, you can say, okay, let him draw the Swords to Plow series because I have no targets for him anyway. So in that way, you can kind of lock your opponent and it works really well uh, with the card Simbad as well. So it's often played. Simbad is a card from the Arabian Nights and it says tap, draw a card. And if it's a land card, uh, you can keep it. And if it's not a land card, you need to discard the card. Now, obviously, when you have Field of Dreams, you can see what card you're going to draw. So you can see if it's a land or not. Um, so all in all, that's kind of how the deck works and usually there's a fireball in there uh, to kill your opponent or of course you can simply mill your opponent with all the millstones also in combination with maybe your brain geyser where you say okay you just have to draw a ton of cards. Um, so there are some, some ways here also you usually play with a Sylvan Library in Field of Dreams decks. It's 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 a very good card when you're playing a combo deck because you're always looking for your combo pieces and obviously Sylvan Library can help you finding that the right combo pieces. So that's also an option. I'm not sure if he's playing that today. I do know that I'm playing against this Field of Dreams deck. Um, before we go to the actual game, I would like to uh, show you my deck and quickly go through the idea behind my build. I am playing with a Mono Blue Wizards deck and I'm kind of called it a wizard's deck because I'm playing with four uh, protocol sorcerers in this deck and uh, this is the picture of the deck so as you can see it's mono blue um, it has a lot of lands in here actually I believe it's 25 lands and that's also the main reason why I'm playing with two Simbats because uh, if half of my cards are lands I can usually use my Simbats to find lands and an interesting um, thing to add here is that usually with this deck I just want to keep my opponent at bay so I'm, I'm a little bit like I want to make sure that I don't get any creature damage so for instance when I play against a very aggressive uh, deck you know with a lot of smaller creatures like a weenie deck what I want to do is use my four maze of ifs and if I cannot find them I can always use my simbats to find my maze of ifs I don't necessarily want to counter um, the creatures that my opponent is playing because it's it's fine i want to stop them with maze of if i want to kill the small creatures with my protocol sorcerer and i want to steal the bigger creatures with my control magic the counter spells that you can see at the bottom so i'm playing with nine counter spells four counter spells four spell blasts and a mana drain so i'm playing with those kind of to protect my protocol sorcerer and also to kind of when my opponent for instance in this case is playing with a combo deck to try to kind of make sure that he cannot assemble his combo pieces so that's an interesting thing to keep in the back of your mind that my counter spells are not to counter any creatures so the creature threats i try to kind of solve with my maze of ifs and my control magics and the smaller ones with my protocol sorcerer so i want to win 
uh, the game basically by uh, pinging my opponent to death with my protocol sorcerer. So as you can see, I'm also playing with three clones. I'm also playing with the Vesuvian double ganger. I'm also playing with the pirate ship. So these are potentially all just pingers. So you could say it's a pinger deck. I'm playing with nine pingers. If you count the um, double ganger and the clones also as pingers because my goal of the deck is to kind of copy my protocol sorcerer now as a backup here i'm playing with a mahamoti Jin. so if everything fails i'm playing with a mahamoti it's a five six fatty and you know i can i can deal some damage i'm also playing with a ghost ship pretty much there's a lot of at least i think there's a lot of flavor in this deck when you read the uh, text on protocol sorcerer it says that it can always find a job it, you know it's always hired because of its unique skills being a wizard so the idea is that he gets hired on the pirate ship where he meets Simbat, and there's also a ghost ship because ghost ship is also a ship so for me it kind of makes sense i really i really like the art of ghost ship and enjoy playing with it uh, and hey in the end the end of the day it's a 2-4 flyer and it can block a lot um so let's have a look. I also have some ivory towers. They're very important here because I want to use the ivory towers to kind of give me a life cushion. So when my opponent, for instance, uses a lot of direct damage or again plays very aggressively with, for instance, black vices, I can use that ivory tower to kind of cancel that out and buy me some time. What you want to do as a blue player is get to the mid game because as soon as you're in the mid game, you have enough mana to kind of deploy your counter spells and to make sure that your opponent cannot really do anything and you're just pinging away at the life total of your opponent. So that's kind of the idea here. I'm playing with four Fowler Stones because I don't have any Moxen. Unfortunately, I don't have the Blue Mox. I don't have a, a Lotus. So I need to find some cheaper solutions to get some mana advantage because I do need some mana advantage to be able to counter the spells of my opponent. So that's why I've chosen uh, to play with Felwer Stones and they work pretty well in old school, especially since uh, players in old school usually play with City of Brass. So that means that uh, my Felwer Stone is turning into uh, an artifact that can produce any type of mana. So just to wrap it up here, what my deck wants to do is counter all the non-creature threats Use my Maze of If to kind of take care of the creature threats, the big threats I want to steal with Control Magic, and I just want to ping my opponent to death. Now, let's see um, how this is going to work out for me uh, taking on this Field of Dreams combo deck. Game number one with Hank on the play on the left, starting with Tundra, a Mox Jet, and a Chaos Orb. That's so a pretty decent start here. Starting there with a land. Uh, hmm, that's not looking great for me here. Uh, playing that second island, that means that at least I can counter. Let's see what my opponent can do. Playing an other, another Mistress Factory, so he can get some damage in if he wants to. And decides to play something. He's going to play a Mind Twist, and there is the counter spell. Feels great to kind of counter a mind twist. I mean, it's still not looking great for me here, but just happy. Not keeping any mana here to counter. Instead, I'm playing a Felwer Stone and playing a Simbat. Interesting here. Usually, I choose to kind of keep two blue mana open to kind of give my opponent this idea. You know, I can, um, I can possibly counter your spells here. Kind of hoping to make him change his usual routine of play. Um, swing in with two Mishra's Factories, so I'm going to 16, and there's that Maze of If that I talked about in the introduction, a very important part of my deck, because my deck is slow, so I need those Maze of Ifs to kind of get the damage off my back. 16 is still fine. And there's a Field of Dreams here, and remember, the interesting thing is when we, when we start this game, we don't know what decks we are actually playing. So obviously afterwards I add an introduction to it where I talk about the decks, but I don't know what decks I'm going to play. And here you can kind of see my Simbat um, getting into action and doing a lot of work here because of that field of dreams here. Um, if this is a good idea to draw that many cards against a deck that wants to mill you, I'm not sure, but at least for now it's great because I can play my Ivory Tower. Ivory Tower and Simbat have great synergy together because because of Simbat you can get extra cards and you can gain more life. 
And there's going to be a flip here, so I'm going to put it on slow-mo. And let's see, is he going to hit the target? And boom, and I believe he was targeting the Sinbad here, but he misses. So that means I get to keep the Sinbad. Great. So hopefully that Sinbad is kind of going to mess up his plans. And there is a moat there. And again, for me, the moat is not a big problem having a pinger deck. And sending back one of his Mistress Factories. But what he does in response is tapping that untapped Mistress Factory to kind of pump um, pump his other Mistress Factory. So that means that I get three damage instead of uh, four damage here. And this is interesting what you see happening here is in my upkeep step, I activate my Simbat while my tower is still on the stack. So I gain extra life. Um, but then my opponent responds by milling away the cards that are then on top. So he milled away the clone and the control magic and now there is a strip mine on top. So it's kind of getting complicated here with that millstone, uh, but also with the Simbat on my side. So we're just responding on everything. And I believe I've just played a clone and I've copied the Simbat. So I've got two Simbats now. Obviously Simbat is a very valuable creature um, because of that field of dreams and I look at how many lands I'm actually drawing and uh, that's because I'm playing 25 lands in this build so it's quite a lot so here I'm using my Simbat and I'm using the Simbat again and I'm trying to find any something useful and I found it here in uh, the form of a prodigal sorcerer so that's actually pretty great um, playing it out now having enough mana also to counter here and it's hard to see. There's not a lot of space on my side. Um, so I'm trying to kind of rearrange the cards for you. But it's it's looking pretty... Well, I, not, it's not great for me, but it, it, it's, it could be worse. I mean, considering my opponent has kind of that soft lock on the table, at least I have the two Simbats to kind of work around it. Obviously, the big downside here is that I am drawing tons of cards. Now, look at what I'm doing here. Um, I'm saying I don't want to have the soul ring, so I'm just um, choosing to draw that and then I know that I have to discard it. So I'm doing that on purpose here. But this is not great because now I have a protocol sorcerer on top and my opponent can easily mill that away and I need my protocol sorcerers to actually win the game. And that's exactly what he does now. So he's milling those two cards away. There's a mana drain on top. And this is such a, a, a tactical game now. Because I need to think about how many cards do I want to draw. And my opponent has to think, okay, what cards can I let him draw? What cards can I not let him draw? And how do I need to do this with those two Simbats that my opponent has as well? Because I can activate those also when there's a card on top that's not a land, but that I don't necessarily want to draw. But I believe my library is already like thinning out here and there is another mill so that's a little bit risky here of my opponent not having any millstones now to respond anymore playing a demonic tutor so I'm curious what will he look up here maybe something to get rid of that protocol sorcerer then again he's on 20 and that's the problem here for me as well like um, I'm losing a lot of cards every turn. I'm losing four cards, well, five cards if he only mills me and I just draw a card, but I'm losing even more cards if I activate my Simbat. Gaining some extra life here, but life is not really that important for me. Maybe it was early game with those Mistress Factories, but it's not now. And last turn I was able to ping him just for once. He's on 19 now. And as you can see, I've kind of stopped using my Simbats, but I kind of think it's too late, to be honest. And he's doing a Brain Geyser, 4-5. Okay, it's on himself. He could have considered doing it on me as well. And playing a land here. Does mean that he can only mill me now just for one go. Ping him at the end of turn. And draw this. 
This is all at the end of turn. And there's a Ma multi gen at the top. So that's what I want to draw in response. Obviously, he uses his millstone. But look at this. Now it's my turn. And he doesn't have enough mana to mill me again. So this is actually great. So I'm gaining some extra life there. It's not that important. I'm now in 28, playing that extra particle sorcerer here. And now it's looking good for me, but do I have time still? That's the big question. Do I have time or is it too late? Because he can still mill me for four. And he's going to 17, taking a damage from the City of Brass, playing a Sylvan Library. Another card we discussed in the introduction here, very useful when you're playing a combo deck. It's actually one of the reasons why I sometimes splash green just for the Sylvan Library. It's such a powerful card. So pinging here for one, and remember that other Protocol Sorcerer still has Summoning Sickness, and there he asks for a card count. That went really fast, but I believe I don't have a lot of cards anymore. And remember, I mean, with two Millstones, I'm losing four cards to the Millstones. I have to draw a card every turn, so I'm going down five cards. So right now he's not using it as a soft lock anymore. He's just using it to mill me to death. And he's doing this now very aggressively. And I don't think I can make it. I mean, I can, I can still do, deal some damage, but I don't think it's going to be enough. And there's just a lot of stuff happening with the Sylvan Library also getting activated during the upkeep. And these games can get complicated very quickly. Oh, this is brutal. Oh, luckily I've got a counterspell here. Oh, but he's countering the counterspell. And, oh, and that's, oh man, that's just deadly because that was my only chance of kind of winning it. And it's so unfortunate for me that he has a double... Uh, that he has that mana drain. And look at my hand, it's just filled with lance. And that makes sense, because I drew a lot of lance thanks to the Simbats. Um, so basically I was holding one counter spell to protect my Timmies, but it's not enough. And this is very frustrating, because I know that, you know, my opponent has the millstones, so he's not going to let me draw into anything useful here. And this is the lock, and, and, and besides... Even with the two Protocol Sorcerers on the board, I still needed seven turns to ping because he's on 14. So I still need seven turns. So I, I doubt if that would have been enough. Very interesting what we see happening now because of the Sylvan Library. He has to constantly show uh, the extra cards that he's drawing because of the Field of Dreams. So I get to kind of see what he's going to draw. And it's not a lot of useful stuff, but he doesn't need anything useful because all the useful stuff is already on the battlefield. So, I mean, what he needed was that mana drain, and he had the mana drain, so. I cannot really see an out for me, actually, at this point in the game, so I wonder if I'm still going to play, or... Okay, I'm counting my cards. Maybe for the sake of it, we're just finishing it t till the end. This is still the first game, though, so we get to sideboard, or did we... Yeah, I do believe we sideboard. I'm not sure, actually. But look at him go now, milling me for four. Oh, there's a Brain Geyser. Now, that's really a useless <laughs> useless card in, in, in this matchup. Well, in this case, I should say, because not necessarily in this matchup. But in this particular state of the game, the Brain Geyser is pretty horrible. Well, I, maybe I can Brain Geyser my opponent. Because he's, he's running pretty low on cards as well, although it, it, it can never be as, as, as low as my as my card total. Milling me again, that's it, that's the game, I am dead. Well, actually, <laughs> oh, this is nice. Did you see that at the end he's playing an Ancestral Recall, forcing me to draw three cards with only one card in the library? Well played. So I've lost this first game. Let's quickly go to the second game and, and see if I can get back from this. Game number two. So I'm about to start. And at least now I know what my opponent is up to. And hopefully that kind of helps. And it looks like he's taking a mulligan here. So we're playing according to the London mulligan rule. So he can draw seven again. And then if he wants to keep, he needs to put one of his cards on the bottom of his library. 
So let's have a look here. Let's see what he's going to do. And he's putting a card there on the bottom of his library. And I've already started here with an island. And he's drawing an underground sea and a mox. Oh, that's such a nice start for him. Okay, time walk, blue power, here we go. So he gets an extra turn. And playing a mind twist for two. And this, this is just crazy, like, he's taking a mulligan, so I'm feeling kind of confident, and then he's doing this. So now I'm feeling not so great. So I'm discarding here a ghost ship and a counter spell. So I think the counter spell hurts the most because you want to be able to just counter. And oh, look at this. I'm not playing an island. I'm not finding any land. Oh, that is bad news for me. Did I keep a one lander? That's kind of strange. Maybe I assumed since the deck has so much land that I would kind of draw into a land, but I don't think that's a very smart decision on my part and he's played a demonic tutor and into well we don't know yet uh past the turn i played a felber stone at least finding an island there that helped and look at that ancestral recall are you kidding me another piece of blue power and no counter spell for me here no option to at least now with the felber stone i get to produce any type of mana because of that um city of brass Playing a second Felwer Stone and playing a Simbat. But again, I'm tapped out, so that means I cannot counter anything that my opponent is going to do. So I'm very vulnerable here, and my opponent already has a Millstone. And if he can play a Field of Dreams, then he already has his Soft Lock here. And yes, there it is, Field of Dreams. And I wonder if he's going to mill this one and he is there I go finding the Maamoti Jin taking it because I know it can help me here playing an island and if I can cast that Maamoti Jin I can do some serious damage here and this is interesting so I've boarded in a copy artifact and I'm trying to copy his <laughs> his millstone kind of doing what he's doing um, but he's countering it, and after that, I'm playing the Prodigal Sorcerer. So I love to do that. When you have enough mana to do that, it's great, because it's kind of a win-win. When you have two spells, and you're like, okay, if he counters one, I can still play the other. Kind of stacking the spells. Again, I don't have any mana to counter anymore, so that's it's not ideal. And my opponent here is taking the Simbad. That's interesting. Because I can kill that with the Protocol Sorcerer. And if he would have taken the Protocol Sorcerer, uh, I think that would have been a better choice because he could have pinged the Simbat. So I think he's realizing that now. Um, I've got six mana. And I'm playing a Maamoti Jin. Oh, no. Oh, man. I didn't think about this. He's playing a Red Elemental Blast. And I've kind of thought, okay, he's not playing any... Um, red, so he probably doesn't play with Red Elemental Blast in his sideboard. Well, guess what he does? Oh, and this is just... This is very painful. This is... Because I kind of... This was my hope. This Maamoti Jin. This was my hope. Okay, well, let's get back to the program. Playing a clone over the Protocol Sorcerer. So at least having two pingers. Oh, and look at that Red Elemental Blast. That looks so powerful. I mean, I'm playing a mono black deck and I have blue elemental blasts in my sideboard but I just assumed that he wouldn't play any red elemental blast not playing red as a main color in his deck well played well played sir this is a big problem for me uh, at least I, I get to ping him and look at it lovely pirate ship it's probably never going to see play but uh, there he goes already Pirate ship, I love to cast pirate ship. But it's very difficult to do so, and it's even more difficult to keep it on the board. And pinging him for two here. So he's going to 14, or 15, I guess.
And this is nice, having that Vesuvian, but he's gonna mill it away. Basically what he's going to do is, is he's just gonna make sure that I only draw islands. <clears throat> and I guess I'm lucky here for at least finding that spell blast, picking him for two again, so he's on 13. I mean, as long as I can have those two, yeah, 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 playing a red elemental blast. What can I do? Can I counter? Yes, playing a spell blast over his red elemental blast, so that's great. Obviously, he knew I had that one. So I guess he was kind of, he knew that this would happen, but at least now my spell blast is out of my hand. So I guess he wants to play something now that's even more valuable. Activating here, attacking. And I'm just taking the damage. I am on 14, it's not great. But I really want to keep the pingers to ping, uh, to ping him, the prodigal sorcerers, to, to deal damage here. End of turn, he's going to 9. And again, I have a land on top. At least, the match is a bit more close. I really feel that I kind of, well, I wouldn't say lost the match. I haven't lost yet. But where it went wrong is with that Mahamoti Jin cast and that Red Elemental Blast. That was just so painful. And look at look at those four Mishra's factories, by the way. I mean, they're seriously forming a problem now. I'm on 14. And, and he can attack me now for, you know, quite a, a lot of damage. This is interesting. Ah, he's playing Control Magic over one of the Timmies. And obviously the Timmy is killing itself. But it's basically a removal spell. And that's pretty good because now, instead of just having four turns to live, all of a sudden he has uh, eight turns to go. And I think the bigger threat here is actually the Mishra's Factories in this case. So I'm dealing one damage, he's not attacking me. So it looks like he's going for the mill plan. And there's a desert. And desert is again one of those cards that I really, I really like to play with, but in all honesty, they haven't really been that useful for me. So maybe I need to replace them with Mishra's Factories. Let me know what you think. Would you play a desert in this case, in this particular deck, or would you play a Mishra's Factory? I'm curious to hear it from you. Um, going back to the game, it's not looking great for me. I kind of lost my chance here, it looks like. Um, is he going to attack? Yes, he is attacking you with two Mishra's Factories. I'm going to 10, at least pumping them up, so it means I'm going to 8 life here. And I just, I cannot find anything useful. Well, I, I can actually, but my opponent is milling it away, so that's why I cannot do anything against those uh, Mishra's Factories here. And it looks like I've boarded out quite a lot of Maze of Ifs. I did see a few. Uh, makes sense though, because he's not playing with a lot of creatures. I probably also boarded out my two control magics. But then he boarded in his control magic, so that makes me wonder maybe I should have kept them into. You know, when he control magics my deck, um, my creature, I could control magic it back. Uh, anyway, I'm on two life. And look at that, there's a maze of it. So I still play with a few. But no, this is this is lost game. So he's now winning uh, with his four Mistress Factories. I mean, drawing all four, that's pretty lucky. Uh, but hey, well done. At least I got him to five, and I got a little bit closer that second game. But all in all, I guess uh, my deck is just not strong enough uh, yet. So at least I'm, I'm killing... Uh, one of the Mistress Factories, but it's not gonna... I'm blocking and dealing damage, but it's not gonna save me. Uh, so that's it, that's game. And, and and that's it for today. So congratulations, Hank. Uh, you've beat me with your Field of Dreams deck. So it's a, it's a cool deck. If you'd like to know more about um, Field of Dreams, I'll add a link to the description below with um, that links to uh, an article about the Field of Dreams deck that's on the Vakwak page. And, and Vakwak.se is a very um, useful page if you enjoy old school magic and you can find a lot of interesting brews there. So if you don't know the website yet, it's definitely uh, worth paying a visit. Um, 
For now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to watch more games, please have a look on the channel. If you're not a member yet, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I believe we're around 700 subscribers. I'm hoping to reach a thousand um, in the near future. So it would be great if you could help me with that. It would really benefit the channel and help me to make more content for you. For now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic, and see you next time. <laughs>